This is ABC 15 Mornings. The resistance holding strong. The Ukrainian military has done what no one expected it to do. Russian forces no longer moving forward. The next step in this pandemic. Two years ago today would have predicted that we have close to a million deaths. Are free COVID tests and vaccines coming to an end? Demanding a pay raise. More increases happening as opposed to the same increases over the same period of time. As inflation hits, should your salary go up more than once a year? Saves the rebound, kicks it to Holiday. Extra look, no, McGee. The fun continues. Another big win for our sons as they now return home. Yes, the suns are on fire just the way we like them. Hey, happy Thursday. Happy Friday Eve. Oh, by the way, happy St. Patrick's Day. We got the green <laughs> on for you. Nick Saletti here alongside Allison Rodriguez. Yeah, so happy to be with all of you on this Thursday. So before you head out the door, you got to know what things are going to be like, right? So let's bring in our friend meteorologist Iris Samosia with a look at that most accurate forecast. I am hoping for a little bit of a break from this warmth because walking out there, Ooh. you get to schwitz a little. You get a to schwitz right? a little, right? <laughs> like you're putting in a picnic. <laughs> right. We're going to drop a few degrees, Allison, but I can't get rid of the 80s just yet. At least not these next couple of days, but don't worry. We've got a cool down in sight for the weekend. I know that I'm looking forward to those 70s making a comeback at least briefly. But this morning as you step outside, you know, you won't need that heavy coat. Our temperature is cool, but at 64 degrees in Phoenix at this hour. So not too cold to start the day. Winds also light after some breezy conditions across the state yesterday. Winds right now coming in out of the west at five miles an hour. They'll generally stay below 10 miles an hour today as our temperatures head back into the 80s. But here's the deal. We're only going to be in the 80s for about an hour or two, and that's because today's high is going to end up about four degrees cooler than yesterday. We reached my forecast high of 85 yesterday today, going with 81, and we'll likely be in those 80s at around three to four, even five o'clock, but then back down into the 70s after that. A really nice day to be outside. Then tomorrow we climb just a couple degrees, but another great day to be outdoors, especially as we get more spring training games going around the valley tomorrow. We'll talk about the changes coming this weekend, though, because we've got a warm up and then a cool down, even rain chances. It's all in that super seven day forecast still ahead. Megan Thompson, though, giving us an update on our morning drive, and I'm loving all of the green that I'm seeing behind you this morning. Isn't it beautiful yeah. here on a Thursday morning on the St. Patrick's Day, holding down the green here as we get a check of traffic sponsored by Accident Law Group, at least in some spots. Of course, the I-10, the 17, starting to see that slowing. So we'll get an updated look at those drive times in a moment. We do also have a crash to tell you about. It's off the freeway here in the East Valley. Guadalupe Road and Maple Avenue just south of the US 60 bringing you to the I 10 the loop 101 seeing some slowing as you're making your way onto the interchange. Let's zoom in to see a live picture of that scene. Here are those eastbound lanes that I'm pointing to right now seeing that slowing at this time of the morning. So here's a look at that desert drive time. If you're about to leave on the I 10 eastbound from the 303 to the mini stack, we have just jumped into the yellow at 30 minutes, but staying in the green on the 17 southbound from the 101 to the stack at 14 minutes and the 51 southbound from the 101 to the mini stack. That is 13 minutes. We'll get a check of traffic predictor to see how those speeds may change coming up in just a little bit. Let's get to our top headlines right now. The latest report from the Arizona Department of Health Services showing about 5,100 COVID-19 cases added in the past week. Just a month ago, we were reporting 5,000 cases a day. The state also reporting 457 deaths, more than half of those happening on or before the first week of February. Now, while our cases and hospitalizations are going down, the pandemic not over, but soon it may be harder and more expensive for you to get a COVID test or treatment. Amelia Fabiano joining us live right now. Amelia, this all has to do with federal funding. Nick, so this week, lawmakers in Washington decided not to pass additional funding for COVID services. So that means a lot of coverage here will start to shift into the private market. It means maybe when you go to a testing site like this Embry Health one at Mesa Community College, it'll cost you out of pocket if you don't have private insurance. It could also mean you might be paying out of pocket for treatment like monoclonal antibody drugs, which can come with a price tag of thousands of dollars. Health officials will need to look at moving certain treatments to the commercial market, potentially by this summer. 
we would then need to go through private insurance. We saw record daily testing and case numbers during the Omicron surge over the winter. Well, now the subvariant of that BA2 is the next concern, accounting for about a quarter of all new cases right now. Dr. Anthony Fauci says it may become the dominant strain here in the U.S. in the next few weeks, which could increase testing, vaccinations, and guidelines. We have to be careful that if we do see a surge as a result of that, that we're flexible enough to reinstitute the kinds of interventions that could be necessary to stop an additional surge. So the antiviral pill for COVID is only authorized by the FDA for emergency use, which means it cannot be sold commercially. The White House says it will start to wind down that COVID-19 program that pays for services like vaccinations and testing for people who don't have insurance as early as next week. So, Allison, this could change how a lot of people have to approach this pandemic. Yeah, especially these days when our wallets are taking a big hit. This is something I know yeah. uh, our community is going to be watching closely. Uh, this morning, we're expecting to get an update from Glendale Police on a hostage situation that took place at a Jared jewelry store. Police saying four men went into this business near 75th Avenue in Bell last night, one of them threatening customers and workers inside with a handgun, preventing them from leaving and the group eventually taking off with cash and jewelry but they were later detained by officers. A firefighter hurt battling a house fire in Chandler. Look at these flames here. They were just shooting through the roof of this home near Val Vista and Riggs. The firefighter evaluated there at the scene. We're told he's going to be okay. Everybody inside the home also made it out safely, but the house is a total loss. At 606, now to the latest on Russia's war in Ukraine. Ukraine's military says it's going on the offensive and will launch counterattacks against Russian forces. Officials in Ukraine say Russia bombed a theater with hundreds of people were using for a shelter. This morning, it's unclear how many people were injured or killed in that attack. In a new update, the UK Ministry of Defense says Russia's invasion is likely stalled right now on all fronts with forces making minimal progress. This comes as the U.S. is sending $800 million in new military aid for Ukraine, including powerful anti-aircraft weapons. We have breaking news this morning on Phoenix Mercury star Brittany Griner. We're just learning that her detention in Russia has been extended. A Russian news agency is reporting that she's going to be held for at least two more months until May 19th. Exactly one month ago, customs agents claim they found cannabis oil in her luggage after searching her bag at a security checkpoint at the airport in Moscow. Griner plays for a prominent Russian basketball team during the WNBA offseason. The news of her arrest coming to light only after Russia began invading Ukraine. Her current location also unknown other than Russia saying she's in police custody. In the meantime, I want to switch gears right now. 607, time to play ball. Today, spring training will finally begin in the Valley. The Cactus League kicking things off with three games. The Diamondbacks will take on the Rockies at Salt River Fields. The Chicago Cubs and White Sox have two games today. Also, one at Sloan Park in Mesa, the other at Camelback Ranch. Tickets are on sale right now for Cactus League games, which runs through April the 5th. As you can imagine, local business owners thrilled that spring training is finally here after not just the MLB lockout delay, but limited capacity because of the pandemic. For a lunch crowd, for us to be this busy right now, and it, spring training is, it hasn't even started yet. So we're so close, and with March Madness, St. Patrick's Day, spring training, all of that starting the same day is going to be a really, really cool event. Businesses we spoke with in Mesa and Scottsdale tell us they expect to bring in at least double the customers they've seen over the past two years. Our Phoenix Suns heading home after a successful road trip. The team throttling the Rockets in Houston last night. That's right. Four Suns players scoring at least 20 points. They were on fire. D-Book coming in with a nice 36. And that's even with some key players on the sidelines. Jay Crowder out at the last minute. Cam Johnson, Chris Paul both still dealing with injuries. Yeah, so tomorrow the Suns, they are back at the Footprint Center. They're going to be hosting the Chicago Bulls. 608 next on ABC 15 mornings. Do you deserve a raise? Why more companies are giving their workers the chance to boost their pay? I'm Joe St. George in Washington. What is behind the rise in legislation across the country restricting young people from transitioning? What do transgender Americans say? What do medical professionals say? We look at the debate next. 
Ready to crack down? Netflix knows you're sharing your password, and soon you may have to start paying more for that. Let my mom know. She's going to get kicked off the account soon, I guess. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's 609 right now. Let's take it live outside. This is the Loop 101 Agua Fria near Thomas Road. Those flashing lights off to the left-hand side. We'll get a look at what this is doing to your drive time. Coming up. Do you have a consumer problem? Let Joe know. Call us or go to abc15.com slash let Joe know. Welcome back. Today, the United Nations Security Council will hold an emergency meeting about the growing humanitarian crisis because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The UN saying more than 3 million refugees have left Ukraine since the war started three weeks ago. And now, surrounding countries like Poland, they're struggling to care for everyone. A new report from the CDC saying even mild cases of COVID-19 could lead to diabetes. Doctors believe a COVID infection could trigger an autoimmune response. Type 1 diabetes is thought to be an autoimmune reaction where the body attacks insulin-making cells in the pancreas. Also today, the U.S. Census Bureau will release the 2016 to 2020 American Community Survey. Now, this report provides key data on population and housing for communities across the country, which local governments use when they make funding decisions. Netflix once again threatening to crack down on sharing those accounts. The streaming service saying it plans to test ways to make users pay for sharing an account with people who don't live with them. Soon it's going to launch a test run of new prices to add an extra member. Uh-oh. It's 614. Right now, transgender rights are in a unique place in this country, with some states pushing for more restrictions on things like gender-affirming health care. So where is this debate going? This morning, political reporter Joe St. George takes a closer look. I started my transition at the age of 13. I have to be honest, every story I cover teaches me more about the process of someone's transition. I always knew, yeah, definitely. In Jasmine Tazaki's perspective, I'm Japanese, white and black. Is definitely teaching me more about this nationwide debate. We're fighting a different fight. Across the country, transgender rights and laws are differing more from one state to another. Last year, 147 anti-transgender laws were proposed in 34 states. More have been introduced this year. In Texas, the governor just lost a court battle to allow social services to investigate parents for child abuse if they allow a child to transition. In Idaho, the state house just passed legislation that would sentence parents to life in prison prison if they seek out gender affirming health care for their child. The state Senate, though, defeated that this week. In Florida, lawmakers have restricted teachers from discussing gender identity in some grades. Jasmine lives in Tennessee, a state that has recently restricted puberty blockers. She says if people think this will stop young people from transitioning, they're wrong. And if the child has already expressed that they want to transition, the transition will ultimately happen. You just may not be a part of that process. Jasmine's hope is that the courts will keep blocking efforts that would restrict transgender rights, although she knows this is an unsettled issue and it may be years before rulings of the Supreme Court actually happen. Until then, we're talking about major surgeries here. We're Eric Cassius provides us some insight stuff. into the science. Be patient. Don't jump in so fast. He is a counselor who has helped families with transgender children for decades. The first step therapy for the entire family. No state is restricting that. It's a very difficult transition for the parents learning to accept the kid as who they are. As for why there is a conservative push for new restrictions, perhaps it's best summed up by Republican State Representative Bruce Scott Speaker, of Idaho. This bill is about protecting children, which is a le legitimate state interest. As for Jasmine, if my child wanted to transition, it would scare me just as bad. She understands this is a tough debate. Celebrating that your child is discovering who they are. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Time right now is 616. Let's talk about that most accurate forecast in case you're getting ready to step outside. Maybe you're starting your day early so that you can get off early and go celebrate St. Patrick's Day or you've got spring training to get to. Well, let's talk about what's happening today as temperatures are in the 50s to 60s here as we kick off our Thursday morning. A cool start, not too cold though as you step outside. Goodyear, you're right at 61 degrees. Wickenburg, you're in the 60s too. Glendale, good morning. You're checking in at 61 and if you look at the East Valley, a little cooler with temperatures in the mid 
50s in most spots, but 57 in Apache Junction, Queen Creek at 55, down to 51 now in the Santan Valley. That's one of the cooler spots around the valley. We'll start off with cool temperatures and then we warm back into the 80s today, but today will end up being about 4 degrees cooler than yesterday. Our temperatures still a few degrees above average, though. Our average is 79, so that's actually climbed a little bit. Our temperature is not too far from average as a result as we top out at 81 in Tempe, 82 in Glendale and in Goodyear. We'll reach 81 in Deer Valley, 80 in Queen Creek and upper 70s today for Cave Creek. Now let's talk baseball. If you're heading out to see the Diamondbacks versus the Rockies at Salt River Fields, temperatures climbing into the upper 70s by first pitch. We'll see abundant sunshine around the valley and temperatures will then warm into the low 80s by the time you're heading home. Now keep in mind all that sunshine is going to potentially lead to some summer burns if you're not protecting your skin. Our sunburn or our UV index rather is now at a seven. That means our burn time is at about 30 minutes and it peaks right around midday just as those games are getting started. So make sure that you are wearing sunblock, reapplying it often as well, or maybe opt for some thin long sleeves and don't forget those sunglasses. A gorgeous day for baseball though today and across Arizona really nice for St. Patrick's Day. A high of 50 in Flagstaff, 70 in Globe, 63 today in Prescott and we'll reach 80 out at Lake Havasu. Wind still a factor, especially in northwest Arizona along the lake as those winds coming out of the north funneling down the Colorado River. We're also feeling some of those breezes in eastern Arizona. I'm going to put future cast into motion and you'll notice that we get more breezes today in that eastern pocket of our state. More winds along the river, at least through the morning. This afternoon, the winds will mainly be focused in eastern Arizona, where it's still going to be breezy because those areas are in closer proximity to the storm exiting our state. Winds, though, here in the valley looking lighter as that storm system clears out to the east. So we've got lighter winds, a slight drop in temperatures behind that storm, and then we're watching a warm up Saturday and another storm on the way by Sunday. And that one will bring a bigger drop in temperatures, more winds, and even rain chances too. A high of 81 on the St. Patrick's Day, a little warmer the next couple of days, then cooler into the 70s by Sunday. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Good morning to you. I'm Megan Thompson tracking those road conditions starting in the East Valley as I've st spotted these two issues. Rather, Riggs Road westbound. The road is blocked from Ellsworth to Haas and then Ellsworth Road southbound. That road is blocked between Riggs and Santan Boulevard. Hopefully we'll be able to get you some information on what's going on there. Bringing you to the East Valley, Guadalupe, a crash at Maple Avenue near the I-10 and the US-60, just south of the 60. Taking you to those freeways like the 10, the 17, and the 101, where we're seeing some slowing. Here's what you can expect. Overall, that we're seeing the West Valley looking okay. As you get closer to the Loop 101 on the I-10 eastbound, your speed will drop. We also have two crashes to tell you about on the Loop 101 southbound. Two have been reported in that area. Speeds on the 17 right around 24 miles per hour as you're making your way towards the stack closer to the stack on the 10 right around 32 miles per hour bringing you to this spot your speed dropping below 30 miles per hour due to this crash this is a live view loop 101 agua fria southbound near indian school road i know it's a little out of focus but what we know right now is it's off to the left hand side which i know is a difficult spot to be in at that point of the morning here are those desert drive times in the yellow on the 10 the 17 staying in the green on the 51 and we see traffic predictor moving through to that 7 a.m time frame on the i-10 from the loop 303 to the mini stack 41 miles per hour. 620 right now. Okay, the rides, the food, the music, oh, you know it all coming back at 625. The second weekend of the Ostrich Festival begins today, and it's a deal for people who live in Chandler. Finding relief at the pump coming up for you at 635. Will the governor or even the president consider suspending the taxes we all pay on gas? And at 644, today's the beginning of your brackets getting busted. We'll see who Allison <laughs> thinks is going to win March Madness. <laughs> Plus a big temperature drop heading our way at 648. Iris is going to be back with her exclusive super seven day forecast. In the meantime, a live look out on our roadways, our live drive heading out there. Hopefully your morning is off to a fantastic start. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Inflation in the job market uh, leading companies to do pay reviews with their employees more than once a year. Now, a recent survey finding 20 percent of companies plan to do off cycle salary increases. This is happening in the tech industry as well as hourly jobs like in hospitality, fast food, warehousing and logistics. The reason this is coming up now is because of inflationary pressures. And so the question will be if inflation does not persist. 
Will companies move back to reviewing you know, less frequently? Experts say if your company isn't doing more frequent pay reviews, you may have more leverage to ask about it. Well, despite higher ticket prices, airlines say travelers, they are flocking back to the skies. Companies say demand is rebounding more quickly than expected after the lull caused by the Omicron surge of COVID cases. Delta and American Airlines both had record days for bookings last week. Delta saying rising fuel costs will mean an extra 30 to $40 for a round trip ticket, but they believe customers are willing to pay that. Well, the Ostrich Festival is back and bigger than ever, and today it's all about celebrating the community. Yeah, so let's take a look at this morning's bulletin board. This is the first year the festival is expanding the fun to two weekends. Week two kicks off tonight with St. Patrick's Day celebrations. You can enjoy the food, rides, festivities, and of course the ostriches, right? The main uh, thing here that will all be going on from 4 until 11 p.m. at Tumbleweed Park. And hitting the main stage tonight, 80s cover band The Spasmatics. Today is also the first ever Chandler Community Day. That means all Chandler residents can claim up to two adult tickets and four kids tickets for free. The festival runs through Sunday. For all of the details, head to ostrichfestival.com. St. Patty's Day is going to the birds in Chandler, and that is today's bulletin board. Next at 630, saving green on this St. Patrick's Day. We have some great deals and some great fun you can find across the valley. Plus, all systems are a go. NASA preparing for a major test. That's going to help get man back on the moon. A deadly virus is spreading through the horse community in California, and that has venues here in Arizona on high alert. The safety measures they're now taking. And today, a great day around Arizona. No matter where you're celebrating St. Patrick's Day, 50 for high in Flagstaff, 60s for Sedona, 80 and still breezy in spots like Lake Havasu. I've got your hour by hour valley forecast next.